I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's analysis of the news. I have some articles here concerning Iran. One from Israel Today, which says Iranian officials want to attack Israel now. It reads, an, an influential group of Iranian officials are lobbying the leadership in Tehran to launch a preemptive missile strike against the Jewish state. Haaretz quoted one of these uh, officials as saying during a briefing of foreign diplomats in London recently. Dr. Saeed Safavi, a top uh, advisor to Iranian Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, told his audience that he and others like him want to attack Israel before the latter has an opportunity to follow through on threats to hit Iran's nuclear facilities. He said that Israel's insistence on keeping the military option for dealing with Iran's nukes on the table had bolstered the preemptive strike argument, but that Khomeini had yet to adopt it as official policy. So there are leaders in Iran wanting Iran to attack Israel now, like this month. At the same time, however, from another article here from Debka Files, an Israeli intelligence report, says that U.S. intelligence believes that Iran will be able to build its first nuclear bomb by February, just a few months away. Um, it says, this article says, U.S. intelligence amended uh, estimate that Iran will be ready to build its first bomb just one month after the U.S. president is sworn in. This was disclosed by Debka Files Washington sources as having been re relayed as a guidance to the Middle East teams of both presidential candidates, Senators John McCain and Barack Obama. The information prompted the assertion by Democratic vice presidential nominee Joseph Biden in Seattle on October 19th, saying, quote, it will not be six months before the world tests Barack Obama like they did John Kennedy, end of quote. Debka Files military sources cite the new U.S. timeline. By late January 2009, Iran will have accumulated enough low-grade enriched uranium, up to 5%, for its breakout to weapons-grade 90% material within a short time. For this, the Iranians have achieved the necessary technology in February. Uh, they can move on to start building their first nuclear bomb. Joseph uh, Biden also said in Seattle, quote, Remember, I said it standing here. If you don't remember anything else I said, watch. We're going to have an international crisis, a generated crisis to test the metal of this guy. Uh, Israel's political and military leaders also face a tough dilemma that can no longer be put off. Uh, of whether to strike Iran's nuclear installations military within the uh, next three months between the U.S. presidencies before the last window closes or to take a chance of coordinating with the next U.S. president. So sometime after the election and before the inauguration, Israel is going to have to make its decision as to whether or not it will attack Iran. At the same time, Iran wants to hurry up and give a preemptive strike against Israel. But hey, listen to this. This is mind-blowing. October 6th, this message was given. Hijacked Iranian ship was a dirty bomb meant for Israel on Yom Kippur. Now, you remember the ship that was uh, captured by uh, Somali pirates? and uh, taken off the, uh, to the coast of Africa. Um, this was an Iranian ship filled with nuclear materials. And here's what the article says. On August 21st, 2008, the uh, MV Iran Deyant, um, a huge ship, a dead weight of 44,458 pounds, bulk carrier, was heading toward the Suez Canal. As it was passing the Horn of Africa, about 80 miles southeast of Al-Makala in Yemen, 
The ship was surrounded by speedboats filled with members of a gang of Somalian pirates who grabbed suitable commercial ships and hold them and their cargoes and crews for ransom. The captain was defenseless against the 40 pirates armed with AK-47s and rocket-propelled grenades blocking his passage. He had little choice other than to turn his ship over to them. What the pirates were not banking on, however, is that this was no ordinary ship. The MV Iran Dayant is owned and operated by the Islamic Republic of Iran Shipping Lines, a state-owned company run by the Iranian military that was sanctioned by the U.S. Department of Treasury on September 10th, shortly after the ship's hijacking. According to the U.S. government, the company regularly falsifies shipping documents in order to hide the identity of end users uh, uses generic terms to describe shipments to avoid attention of shipping authorities and employs the use of cover entities to circumvent United Nations sanctions to facilitate weapons proliferation for the Iranian Ministry of Defense. It goes on to say the Iranian ship's captain and engineer were contacted by cell phone by these Somalian pirates uh, and demanded to disclose the actual nature of the mysterious powdered cargo. But the captain and his officers were very evasive. Initially, they said that the cargo contained crude oil. Dry powdered crude oil? Not likely. But then claimed that it contained minerals. Following this initial rebuff, the pirates broke open one of the containers and discovered it to be filled with packets of what they said was a powdery, fine, sandy soil. Within a period of three days, those pirates who had boarded the ship and opened the cargo container with its gritty sand-like contents all developed strange health complications to include serious skin burns and loss of hair. And within two weeks, 16 of the pirates had subsequently died either on the ship or on shore. So you can see that this cargo uh, contains some kind of nuclear material. And then this, par this paragraph says, she was an enormous floating dirty bomb intended to detonate after exiting the Suez Canal at the eastern end of the Mediterranean and in proximity to the coastal cities of Israel. The entire cargo of radioactive sand obtained by Iran from China the latter buys desperately needed oil from the farmer, um, and sealed in containers which, when the charges on the ship are set off after the crew took to the boats, will be blasted high into the air where prevailing winds would push the highly dangerous and radioactive cloud ashore. The ship was nothing more or less than the long-anticipated Iranian attack on Israel not the expected rocket attacks, which could be intercepted by the Israelis, but an even more deadly and unexpected attack by sea. So Iran was planning to attack Israel on Yom Kippur, October the 9th. But <laughs> these Islamic pirates confiscated the ship, thinking they were going to hold it for ransom. Turned out, Sixteen of them have already died. Perhaps others will die. We don't know. But the ship, by the way, remains on shore um, and surrounded by uh, United States ships and I think six other nations. And they're trying to uh, keep the ship uh, from uh, its intended target, Israel. Uh, one of these days, Israel's going to have to come to grips with this Iran situation. And, of course, at the same time, there's Syria, the Hezbollah, there's the Hamas in the south. Israel's the only nation who's facing so many enemies today. And it looks like the United States may turn its back on Israel after the presidential inauguration. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The important thing is Iran is, is Im important to the fulfillment of Ezekiel chapter 38 and the battle of Gog and Magog. So we have Russia to the north of Israel now pouring 
military supplies into Syria. We have Iran with its dirty bomb confiscated by pirates on the high seas. You see, God's in control. He can send some pirates to stop that dirty bomb that Iran planned to detonate off of Israel's shore. When the time is right, things will progress just as the Lord intends it to. I'm J.R. Church. Tune in again tomorrow afternoon for our analysis of the news.